Hello everyone, this is Corey Babka from MarksGroupLive.com. Happy to reviewing working with assignment rules in Zoho CRM. After the video is over, feel free to email us at support at MarksGroupLive.com. Any questions on this subject or anything Zoho for your support needs, be sure, to re be sure to rate this class as well to help out your fellow subscribers to MarksGroupLive.com as well as your other Zoho users and also us to help us make sure that we're doing the best with our videos and how to improve that library. Here are the same main points of what we're talking about today. We're going to talk about using assignment rules to automatically assign your leads, contacts, or cases, or other records. We're going to take the thinking out of that assignment that you might be doing now as to who gets what when I have a trade show list that I'm importing. Let Zoho do the work for you. Okay. Think about specific criteria to make that happen. Your 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 assignment as to whether it's state, territory, region, product interest, or maybe we just do it and end up doing the round robin. So we're going to get to this now. We're going to jump into Zoho CRM and cover those items. Okay. So what I'm going to look at first is I'm going to go into the setup area because that's where it is. And this is part of the automation section of the setup. You know, there's other videos in our library that talk about workflow and blueprints, actions, assignment, case escalation. Uh, I mean, sorry, scoring and case escalation. We're going to talk about assignment rules today. Okay, some of the assignment rules that we've already got set up are things like in the leads area. You notice I've got all my different modules that I can do. Okay, I even got equipment, which is a custom module that we have. Service contracts, classes, cases, deals, right? We can do different things. So for instance, if I have it here that there's a lead, the most common is honestly lead assignment. Because then when you convert a lead, the deal contains or becomes the same owner, the account becomes the same owner, the contact becomes the same, same owner. So that initial ownership piece in the lead area is almost where we want to focus. Okay, And truth be told, when we talk about a 200 row import into CRM from a trade show or a mailing list or something that you had as some sort of an event, we kind of have to make sure that we're, we're doing it correctly and we're assigning it to the right people just to save time. You can assign, it can have these assignment lists or these assignment rules. They can actually fire during an import or just during uh, a new, new record entry. Okay. So if I do this here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our leads and let's just look at what we've got for existing ones. So here I've got one that says country is United States, which is the name of the rule. And what we have, if we edit this, we're going to look at the rules here. So the country is US, USA, United States. It's going to be one or two or three. We're going to assign to this user. Now we've only got two users in the sample data set that you're used to seeing at this point if you've watched a few of our videos. However, in your case, you're going to have 10 or 15 users. Okay. Now I can also do an assign to users with a round robin pattern. Okay. And it could be users or roles or groups that we do like a role. And we would say, I want to have all salespersons, and it would actually add in. There's no users, though. So let's go ahead and just do um, sales manager. See, I'm looking for my roles here, if we've got our different pieces, right? And so you would have with your role the different users that are in there. I could also do groups, choose a group, marketing, sales, right? Or you just do flat out users. And at that point, you would choose which users you'd want to do. So I would say, we're going to round robin, add that, add this one, and those are our round robins. And you can move them up and down if we want to. We can remove them, whatever that is. So if you want to round robin it between four different users out of the sales team, that's fine. You could do this. Okay. We're going to go back to the assignment. And so now what I also do like is that there's a final piece. And this is really, really nice because we're talking about that automation and taking advantage of Zoho CRM for your workflow, automatic assignment of tasks, etc. What I'm going to do here is add a follow-up task. And the task is going to be one of these things here that I have either as a workflow task, right? Or I can add a new workflow task. And by doing that, it's jumping into this and it's going to say, all right, you're going to create a new workflow or a new task item and go from there. Okay, let me just get out of this so we can see where we are. Okay, so now if, if I do that, you can, like I said, choose an existing workflow. So it might be a follow-up for this person's last name. I would say that one is what we want, and I would save it, and away we go. 
right? Let's just go out and let's do a new one. Uh, and then if it isn't United States, it would be someone else who would assign to the other person. Okay, so it's kind of like my international rule, right? So if I go back out to our valid our assignment rules, and I look at different items, I might say deals here, deals by state. Okay. And I say if state is Pennsylvania, or state is Delaware, or New Jersey, it's going to go to the gen user. If it's Colorado or Utah, TMG Live Admin. Okay. If I wanted to do this here, we're going to do the same thing. And we're going to say state. Okay. And say is. And I'll just say FL, right? Do another one here. Say state is, I can say Georgia, okay? And if you see our video on validation rules, you can tell I actually go into, I'm, I'm the one that did that video, I actually talk about having your state code being two digits. Why? For this reason alone. We want to make sure that the states are actually equal to each other. We're not writing Georgia out. We're not writing Florida out. We're actually following a consistent data entry pattern. So therefore, I can have other pieces like fall in the line like dominoes, and I can have things like my assignment rules take effect. So in this case here, I'm going to edit the pattern, and I'm going to make this or and save that because I want or or Florida or Georgia. If you do and, it's never going to fire because you don't have any state where they're both, okay? And I'm going to assign this to general user, or let's just do a round robin, say users, and I'm gonna add these two, okay? And I'm just gonna save that, and there I have another one, okay? So that assignment rule is now working. You notice it was telling me there was it was live, and then it actually does here, it's assigning to more than one person. Why? Because it's doing a round robin, okay? Here's the associated task, that I had, these other two I just don't have one. Okay, You can also reorder these, which is kind of an interesting piece, right? So the reorder is in the in the world of what do I want to take effect first? Okay, What do we want to fire first? And where that comes into play is here I'm talking about states, but maybe I don't want that. Maybe I want to have where product entry or product interest is going to be dynamics on our side. Well, if so, then I'm going to assign that to Kelsey. Okay. Or if I say dynamics and the account revenue is over that, I might assign it to myself. Okay. But then if it fails on that level, or if that if it doesn't fail and it actually gets assigned, it's done at that point. However, if it doesn't meet that criteria, it's going to flow to the next criteria. Then maybe we're looking at Zoho or, Zoho, or maybe an interest that they're not sure what they want. And at that point, it becomes territory or state. Maybe you'll be assigned a gene because he's more into sales and he can determine what product it is. So I could always do it based on product interest first, go through everything, flow it through with the assignment. And then if it fails on those levels, then it goes to the next step and it starts to validate at another level. That's why you've got something here for reorder. You don't have that in other pieces, something like our validation rules or our scoring rules. There's no ordering, but this, it takes precedent in the order of, or that assignment is in precedent in the order. That's why this is very, very important. Okay? And that's where we are. So let's just review what we've talked about today. So talking about using assignment rules with leads, contacts, a lot of your different records themselves, anything that deals with ownership. Um, but what we're doing is trying to take the thinking out of that piece, that, that pause between new record and assignment to the right salesperson. If that takes more than an hour, you might lose business. So if we're doing web form integration, which is another one of our videos that you can watch, and you have people fill out a form that say submit their information, it comes into the system as a new lead, we automatically assign it, we assign a task, that sales rep within minutes after them hitting submit on the website is actually getting notified and actually being able to call this person and try and get the business. In a non-assignment rule type environment, the website, a lead comes in, it might get assigned to someone that gets all of the leads by default. That person needs to go into their My Leads every day, review that, and then assign it manually based on where they are. We've already lost time, right? And so that's what this is, the, that piece that you really want to talk about with assignment, getting those things in. Like I said, it kind of in conjunction with the web form entry and the lead, that's our most common 
lead assignment type rules. Okay, um, and then again, you can do it by product interest, state, territory, specific people, or you can do round robin. Okay, so I hope that helps today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out the library for other training videos like this one. Any suggestions, comments, questions, support issues, give it, drop us a line at support at marksgrouplive.com. Uh, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you at the library. Thanks.